Welcome to the online training using Fast Forward Compile for the Intel HyperFlex architecture. My name is Marlon Price. This is one of several trainings that introduce you to the FPGA design flow changes you need to know if you want to extract the maximum performance from an FPGA made with the Intel HyperFlex architecture. Fast Forward Compile is a feature in the Quartus Prime software to help you optimize an Intel FPGA made with the HyperFlex architecture. By the end of this online training, you will understand how to use this fast forward compilation feature to determine the specific design modifications you can make to your design that will result in improving your design performance. To do this, we will start with an introduction to the fast forward analysis tool, describing what it does and the benefits of using it. We will then cover how to generate the fast forward timing closure recommendations reports and how to read these reports to get information on potential design modifications. Lastly, we will talk about some ways in which you can fine tune the fast forward analysis to make it more useful to you. When designing for the HyperFlex architecture, to get the maximum performance from the fabric, you may need to make some modifications to your RTL. How many and the extent of the modifications you have to make depends on how your design is coded and your target clock speed. But invariably, it is an iterative process. The challenge is being that you don't know exactly all the changes you need to make to meet your target clock speed, and any of those RTL changes may require some time to complete. You may remember from the HyperWare online training that the HyperRetimer reports the path that is limiting performance and provides suggestions on how to fix it. This is helpful, but can still involve a compilation flow of many iterations. For example, you compile your design, you read the HyperRetimer report to see what needs to be changed, make the change, and compile again. The HyperRetimer then reports a new path that needs modifying, so you make a new change and compile again. Another new limiting path is found and the process keeps repeating over and over until you're happy with your clock performance. How many iterations would that require is dependent on how your design again is coded and the target clock speed you're trying to achieve. Enter Fast Forward Compile. To reach the higher levels of performance in your design, you need to know what are the blocks and structures in your design that are truly limiting performance. Knowing this information, you can better tailor your design to take advantage of the HyperFlex architecture. As was discussed in the HyperFlex architecture online training, there are varying degrees of design effort you can use depending on your design and your performance target. So Intel has developed a tool called Fast Forward Compile to help you predict what your performance gain might be before you start implementing the design changes in your code. As part of the Intel Quartus Prime Pro software, Fast Forward Analysis works by virtually implementing hyper-retiming, hyper-pipelining, and some hyper-optimization design modifications for you. By making these virtual changes to your design, it can then show you what performance gains are possible if you implement these changes yourself. To help you understand how you can proceed, Fast Forward returns to you a detailed list of the changes made to your design and the potential clock speeds associated with those changes. If you require clock speeds beyond what Fast Forward predicts, then Fast Forward also provides you with a path in your design that is serving as the bottleneck for even further performance gain. Your design efforts can then focus on addressing that bottleneck. So what are the benefits? Well, one, Fast Forward can tell you of the design changes you can make to improve performance before you actually modify the code. Two, Fast Forward can tell you the clock speeds possible if you make those modifications, so you can decide how much effort you want to put into the modifications depending on what your goal might be. And three, Fast Forward can save you hours, if not days, of time spent modifying code in hopes it translates into some performance increase. All of this together translates into a significant time and effort savings over not using Fast Forward Compile. This slide shows how Fast Forward Compile fits into the Quartus Prime software flow. 
In this diagram, the center horizontal bar represents the standard FPGA compile flow showing synthesis, fitting, and timing analysis. Included with the fitting in this flow are the additional software features to support the HyperFlex architecture, such as the HyperRetimer and HyperWare CAD. Fast Forward is a separate analysis tool that runs on a copy of the fitter netlist after retiming is finished. By making a copy of the netlist, Fast Forward can make all the changes at once without interfering with the results of the standard compilation flow. Fast Forward Compile can be enabled by default to run every time you compile your design and run the fitter. To launch a Fast Forward Compile analysis without running a full compilation, click on Fast Forward Timing Closure Recommendations in the Compilation Dashboard. You can also find the option in the Processing menu within the Start submenu. If you want to run the analysis from the command line, you can use the dash dash fast forward argument along with the Quartus fit executable. During compilation, the hyper retimer will retime the results of the place and route until it hits a critical chain, a path it cannot improve through retiming. There it stops and the retime folder of the compilation report is produced. When fast forward runs, it modifies the netlist and attempts to retime again. It continues the process, trying a collection of different modifications until either the performance reaches your target SDC constraints or it reaches another critical chain that it cannot improve through its modifications. In other words, applying further fast forward modifications failed to produce any further gain. Once the analysis is complete, fast forward then presents the results to you showing you the changes that were made and the clock speeds that were attained with those changes. Most fast forward recommendations will require RTL changes, while others may include changes to settings or constraints. In all cases though, you are responsible for making these changes to your actual design. The Cordis Prime software does not modify any source code for you. When fast forward attempts to modify a design, there are three basic changes it will perform. One, it will try to simply remove some basic retiming restrictions. This is called hyper-retiming. Two, it will try to add in new pipeline stages at select points in the design. This is called hyper-pipelining. And three, it will try to enable RAM and DSP block internal registers if they have not already been enabled by your RTL. This is called hyper-optimization. Each time a collection of modifications are made, Fast Forward reruns the retiming to see if the modification produced some nominal performance gain. Fast Forward results may be viewed in the Fast Forward Timing Closure Recommendations folder of the compilation report once its analysis is complete. One of the reports generated by Fast Forward Analysis is the Clock FMAX Summary Report. This report is shown in the screen capture here. The first value in the FMAX column 275 MHz in this example, is referred to as the base performance, or the design performance before any fast forward analysis. It is basically the performance of the netlist after the retime stage of the fitter. The three columns highlighted by the blue box, called Achieved with Hyper Retiming, Achieved with Hyper Pipelining, and Achieved with Hyper Optimization, display the results of different stages of fast forward analysis on the design. The first column is Achieved with Hyper Retiming. This FMAX value, also 275 MHz in this example, is a potential clock performance if your design is changed using hyper retiming modifications. In this example, we can see that the performance number did not change from the base, so hyper-retiming alone did not produce any gain. The next column is labeled Achieve with Hyper-Pipelining. This FMAX value, 592 MHz in this example, is a potential clock speed if your design is changed using hyper-pipelining modifications. This example is showing us that hyper-pipelining has the potential to produce a 300 plus megahertz gain. The third column is labeled Achieve with Hyper-Optimization. 
This F max value, also 592 megahertz, is your potential clock speed if your design is changed using hyper optimization modifications. Since this number is the same as the hyper pipelining number, this stage does not produce a performance gain on its own. All three types of techniques are covered in more detail in follow-up online training to this one. Please note that these performance numbers are estimates as they are based on the place and route and subsequent retiming results. They are not guaranteed, so you should not look at these numbers as absolutes. Instead, you should focus on the deltas between the performance numbers. This will give you an idea of how much performance gain is attainable, whatever your original base Fmax might be. To provide all of the details, the analysis produces the fast forward details report. You will find one details report per clock domain or related clock group. Just so you know, a related clock group is one or more clock domains defined with the exact same phase and frequency and without any timing paths between them that have been cut with SDC false path constraints. In this details report, Fast Forward breaks down its design analysis in the form of incremental steps or stages, with each step requiring more modification with the potential for more performance gain. In the prerequisite training to this one, Intel Cordis Prime Software HyperAware Design Flow, we learned about the retiming limit details report generated by the retime stage of the fitter. Just like that report, the fast forward details report provides critical chain details and recommendations for critical chain. In addition, the fast forward details report includes three new pieces of information. These are fast forward optimizations analyzed, the estimated Fmax, and the optimizations analyzed. The fast forward optimizations analyzed column provides a summary of the modifications to the design in order to reach that step in performance. The estimated Fmax column tells you the Fmax reached during the analysis by making those changes. And then the optimizations analyze gives you detailed descriptions of the modifications so you know exactly where to go in your design and the changes to make at those locations to reach that estimated Fmax value. This screen capture shows an example fast forward details report for a single clock domain design. First, in the step column, you can see there are four steps reported here. Base performance, fast forward steps numbers one and two, and fast forward limit. In row one, the base performance contains the initial results the same performance reported by the retime stage of the fitter. In rows 2 and 3, each of the fast forward step numbers shows the results of a collection of fast forward modifications, with each step building on the last to show the gains possible by making more changes. In the last row, row 4 here, the fast forward limit step provides information required for performing more advanced hyper optimization or modifications to the design beyond those allowed during fast forward analysis. The names of each of the steps also indicate the type of modifications performed. There are three different step types shown in the details report. Fast forward step hyper retiming, fast forward step hyper pipelining, and fast forward step hyper optimization. As you can see, these correspond to the three types of fast forward modifications we discussed earlier. A hyper-retiming step means that for that stage of analysis, fast forward has removed some barriers that prevent hyper-registers from being used. A hyper-pipelining step means that during that stage, fast forward has inserted additional register stages at one or more locations in the net list for them to be retimed. Some hyper-retiming changes may also have been included in a hyper-pipelining step. Lastly, a hyper-optimization step indicates that for that particular stage, changes were made beyond hyper-retiming and hyper-pipelining, namely enabling RAM and DSP block registers that were not enabled through the code. Some hyper-retiming and hyper-pipelining may also be included in a hyper-optimization step. 
All three stages are covered in more detail in follow-up online training to this one. Now that you understand the meaning of the Fast Forward steps, the next column in the Fast Forward Details Report, the Fast Forward Optimizations Analyze column, gives a summary of the total number and type of modifications implemented for that step. Next to it, the Estimated FMAX column shows the potential FMAX that was obtained by the analysis tool due to the modifications made to the design. Again, you should not treat these numbers as absolutes, but ranges of potential performance gains. Looking at the screen capture again, row 1, the base performance, is the result of the hyper-retimer, the read time stage, the starting point for fast forward analysis. Thus, it shows no optimizations being analyzed. For fast forward step number 1, Fast forward has removed asynchronous clears and added a single pipeline stage in a number of locations. These changes allow the clock speed to increase to 500 megahertz. For fast forward step number two, fast forward has removed more asynchronous clears and added another pipeline stage. Again, these changes are on top of the modifications done by step number one and allow the design to reach almost 600 megahertz. This confirms what we saw in the FMAX summary report which indicated that hyper retiming alone or just removing asynchronous clears did not result in a performance gain. Since the target clock rate has not yet been met, the analysis has produced a fast forward limit. This is the state of the design after Fast Forward has done all of the modifications it can make that will produce a performance gain. A Fast Forward limit will also be reached if the Fast Forward analysis determines that additional performance increases will only result in hold violations. This screen capture shows the report with the base performance step highlighted. Since the base performance is the same as the results of the fitter's retime stage, Fast Forward Compile has nothing new to add here, so this step simply refers you to the retime stage subfolder in the compilation report for more info. If you select one of the numbered Fast Forward steps, the section at the bottom changes to show the Optimizations Analyze tab. This tab provides guidance on exact changes made to the design to reach that particular Fast Forward step over the previous step. So depending on the number of steps you have, you can see the progression of modifications Fast Forward is making to your design. Why is this important? The more information you have, the better decisions you can make regarding what you may want to change and what you may not want to change. For example, you may see that the modifications seem to focus on a particular block in your design or a particular interface. This, in turn, may prevent you from spending too much time focusing on another block that can be more easily fixed. Before we leave this slide, I do want to point out the detail provided for the modification Fast Forward performs. It provides you with a hierarchical breakdown of the exact changes made and the exact location in the design to make those modifications. When you select the Fast Forward Limit step, you get three tabs. The Optimizations Analyzed Cumulative tab will show you the accumulated modifications from all of the Fast Forward steps. The Critical Chain Details tab, which shows you the path that is limiting performance after all Fast Forward modifications have been made. And the Recommendations for Critical Chain tab to give you suggestions on what you can do to fix the critical chain. All of this information provided at the fast forward limit serves as the basis for more advanced hyper optimization and is needed if you're trying to achieve clock speeds beyond those reported by the final fast forward step. Using the critical chain in this way and advanced hyper optimization techniques will also be covered in follow up training to this one. Another way to analyze fast forward compile results is using the fast forward viewer. The Fast Forward Viewer is found in the Quartus Prime software in the Netlist Viewer submenu of the Tools menu. Like other Netlist viewers, the Fast Forward Viewer displays a graphical representation of the design, this time showing the results of the Fast Forward Analysis modifications. 
So if looking at the fast forward report does not help with understanding the impact of fast forward changes, then maybe seeing these changes in a graphical display will. Be warned, there may have been a lot of optimizations performed on the design by the time you get to this point. So understanding the schematic can be a challenge. So it works best when analyzing submodules or smaller parts of the design. As you receive recommendations from Fast Forward on potential design modifications, it may be that not all recommendations are possible for you to implement. Say, for example, you have some legacy code that you simply cannot modify or you are limited in the modifications that you can make to it. As a result, it is useless for the analysis tool to provide recommendations that require changing that block. So Fast Forward Compile gives you the ability to control what and how many modules are analyzed. This means you can focus your analysis on specific blocks, ignoring IP or modules that cannot be changed, or limit the types of analysis that are performed on those selected blocks. First, there is Hierarchical Fast Forward Analysis. Hierarchical Fast Forward lets you focus your analysis on selected modules in your design while ignoring others. Again, not all blocks in your design will require a performance boost, so running fast forward on them is a wasted effort. By default, fast forward will analyze the entire design, so using the hierarchy constraint lets you choose which blocks you want to target. The QSF assignment name is Hyper Retimer Fast Forward on Hierarchy but you can set the option in the Cordis UI using the Enable Hyper Retimer Fast Forward Hierarchy Analysis during Compilation assignment name. This is highlighted here in the screen capture on the slide. If you set the assignment to On for any blocks, then Fast Forward will run only on those blocks and their sub-modules, ignoring the rest of the design. If you set the assignment to Off for any blocks, then they will be explicitly left out of the analysis. Here are a few examples highlighting the use of the constraint. In the left example, hierarchical fast forward has been disabled for modules D and E. So all of the remaining modules A, B, C, E, and F will be analyzed. This you could do if you wanted to ignore specific IP or blocks of legacy code. In the middle example, Hierarchical Fast Forward has been enabled for Module B. So B and its sub-module E will be analyzed while the rest of the design is ignored. In the right example, Hierarchical Fast Forward is enabled for B and disabled for E. Like the middle example, enabling Hierarchical Fast Forward for B means that the analysis is disabled for other parts of the design. This time, though, we are explicitly disabling analysis for submodule E since it would be analyzed along with B if we did not. Another way to control fast forward is to limit the types of analysis performed. This slide shows a list of assignments you can add to your project to disable certain aspects of the fast forward analysis. Applying these assignments to specific instances or globally, you can tell Fast Forward that you never want a particular optimization or modification to be performed on a section of or the entire design. These assignments are covered in more detail in the follow-up training. Once you've applied the recommendations from your Fast Forward Compile to your design logic, you want to confirm the performance and functionality of the results. For performance, you want to verify the predicted performance of the design by recompiling the design, the goal being to run the design with just the hyper-retimer, no additional fast-forward compile analysis. For functionality, note that fast-forward is purely a performance analysis tool. It is up to you to ensure, while you're implementing the recommendations, that any changes you're making do not break the design's expected behavior. So you must re-verify functionality by running the modified design through your simulation test suite again. After you implement your fast forward recommendations and recompile, you may discover that the resulting performance is not as fast forward predicted. Before you assume that you or the software did something wrong, you should understand how fast forward optimization compares to fitter optimization. 
Fast forward analysis is designed to show the performance potential of your design. As we learned in the last slide, it is not designed to produce a functioning result. As a result of this, its strategies for optimization are not the same as when you run the fitter. For one, fast forward only optimizes for a slow corner where the fitter uses multiple timing models in its optimization. Fast forward only optimizes for setup. This means it can push the performance higher and higher without considering the impact to hold times. The fitter, on the other hand, has to consider both setup and hold, so it may reduce the maximum performance to meet hold times as well. The end result of this difference is that fast forward performance numbers can be more optimistic. You may think this is a negative, but in reality, this difference allows fast forward to return solutions much more quickly while still providing valid recommendations for performance improvement. Also consider that the original fast forward report was based on the compilation results of the original design. Once you modify their source, the fitter is seeing a different design than what was presented to fast forward originally. In any case, it is a very easy solution to simply rerun fast forward on the results of the modified design to see what additional recommendations it may return. So this concludes our look at using fast forward compile for the Intel Hyperflex architecture. In summary, you can see that fast forward compile makes it easy for you to analyze what it will take for your design to run faster and an Intel FPGA made with the Hyperflex architecture. Along with its recommendations, fast forward also provides potential clock speed improvements that are possible if those changes are made. And this can be done before you actually make any modifications to the code. If you would like to continue in your learning, you can view the follow-up free online training shown here. The Introduction to Hyper Retiming course talks about how hyper retiming actually works and why it's able to provide such large performance gains. The Eliminating Barriers to Hyper Retiming course then talks about the logic structures in your design that prevent hyper retiming and some alternative solutions to them. Intel provides multiple avenues in which to learn about Intel FPGA products. There's the Intel FPGA YouTube channel, which contains five minute quick videos along with longer, more in-depth training videos. There's the Intel FPGA training website where you can access e-learning courses made up of narrated slides presented in an interactive player, some courses even with labs and demos. Lastly, you can enroll in a live instructor-led course presented either in person at an office local to you or virtually over the web. All instructor-led courses have hands-on lab exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need more assistance, Intel FPGA provides many self-help resources for you to access. For example, there are web pages called landing pages dedicated to specific FPGA technology like external memory interfaces and high-speed protocol interfaces. You can also view and post questions to the community forum, which is monitored by skilled Intel FPGA applications engineers. The Intel FPGA training team is always looking to improve our material. To do this, a survey will be emailed to your registration email address. We welcome any feedback you may have. This concludes this online training. Again, my name is Marlon Price, and I thank you for attending.